everybody welcome to another video so I have been promising I was going to do this video and I just decided to set it up and do it I'm not really trying to worry about camera angles or anything like that so what this video is uh, which is probably in the title is rebuilding my war game collection and if you watch my first hobby time I was talking about how really I started as a war gamer, meaning playing box war games, you know, sort of like this. I mean, I didn't have Luftwaffe, but uh, with the little counters and the chits, I mean, that's, that's pretty much how I started playing war games. And at some point, uh, you know, it transferred more into miniatures or slash role playing because I like the miniatures in the role playing and I like the the themes as in knights defeating dragons and evil creatures you know I really got into that uh because I've always kind of liked nobility and chivalry you know and the whole uh Arthurian quest right the whole grail quest always drove me and so that pulled me more toward uh miniatures and role playing because that was kind of what they were back then. And gradually I kind of got rid of my my war games, which were always, you know, they, these are more geared toward military conflicts in history, which I've always also had an interest in. But lately, as I've gotten older, as the role playing space has really changed from concepts of nobility and chivalry to what I see as concepts of magic sorcery demonology and just you know witchcraft and a whole bunch of other stuff that was never what role playing was about when i was growing up you were always the good guy you were always defeating the dragon right you were always trying to overcome evil uh whereas now i mean you got whole games where you're the the evil character you're the you're the evil person, you know. And I don't, I don't even want to get into some of the other stuff I've seen out there. But my my taste is slowly soured on role playing in general. Uh, not so much miniature games, but a lot of the miniature games nowadays are board games. And a lot of the board games nowadays are imitating the themes in role playing. So you get a lot of demons, monsters, creature types of board games. You know, game, oh, you're going to collect souls or you have to eat the other tribe like hate. And all of these other types of games, the others, you know, you're playing these seven deadly sin, creatures of sin. So none of that stuff appeals to me, right? I'm a human being, right? I don't want to be a demon. I don't want to eat people. I don't want to collect nobody's soul. So none of that stuff appeals to me. So as I've gotten older now, I decided kind of this year that I was going to start rebuilding my war game collection. And kind of the thing that pushed me over uh, was uh, this channel called Art Was Lair, which I keep mentioning, but, you know, it's, it's an interesting channel. And uh, just kind of his love and his knowledge of all things old war gaming. And pretty much since I'd probably say... The last 90 days, I've really kept my eye out on war games and uh, trying to get them in and kind of rebuild my collection. Now, I don't want to wind up with like a hundred different war games. That's that's I don't want to go there, but I do want to get kind of the uh, the ones that I remember first and foremost stuff like Dawn Patrol, which I distinctly remember having this as a kid. I had no idea how to play it. But I did have it, and it looked real good with the Red Baron and Snoopy is kind of what the ideal I had looking at it, which is the, probably the only reason I bought this again. But uh, then also games that I remember owning, like Ambush, growing up. So that has kind of been my focus, but I'm also picking up stuff that I'm hearing other people talk about. I'm picking up stuff that uh, has value. Because if I can flip it, then that can allow me to buy some of these older games that can be quite expensive, like Squad Leader or Advanced Squad Leader. I still don't have a copy of that because it's 
it's not easy getting one uh, with an affordable price. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go by, I mean, I'm going to go one by one with each of the games I've been able to pick up. And I'm going to kind of explain a little to you guys either where I got the game, why I got the game, or what I intend to do with it. So let's get started. Okay, so first up is this game called Lock and Load Tactical System. Now, I don't think this is the entire game. I got this at Gen Con probably, whew, maybe four years ago now. Uh, and I kind of bought it on the whim. I walked by the guy's table. He almost just stuck it in my hand. You know, it was $15 or something. And then he said, it's on sale for 10 And I said, you know, that's okay. I'm just looking. Then he said, hey, just get, just, just do a review on it. Take it for 5 And I'm like, well, okay, I can do a review on it for 5 So wherever you're at, here's your review. Because <laughs> I never did do the review. I'm sorry. But uh, this is all you get is a demo map, which is pretty interesting. This kind of reminds me of a game called uh, Combat Commander. Uh I forget who publishes it. I know the, the creator was Chad Jensen. Uh, so, for it to be such a small demo, though, this is a pretty big rule book. This is a 40-page rule book for a game with a half a map. But you get the counters, which actually look well done. I like counters like these, where you get the figures. So... That looks like that might be some kind of German rifle, rifled squad, and let's see here. So this might be like a leader, some kind of major. So uh, I would like to do a playthrough of this, and that is one of the reasons why I decided to bring it out and include it in this uh included in this uh showing is lock and load tactical world war two air now i don't even know what the game is i mean i'm assuming the name of the game is lock and load tactical although that kind of sounds like the name of a system so it may it may just be the name of the system and this may just be one of the uh games in the system that they've kind of pulled out and made it into like a review copy which i think is a a good idea uh so there's that next up and I, these aren't in any particular order so this game is called battle cry freedom i literally got this two days ago at uh i think it was a half price books i think it was eight dollars which is the only reason i bought it because it was eight dollars but it is a Civil War card game where you play, from what I understand, the entire Civil War with these cards. And they can represent terrain, leaders, and obviously units and attacks. So it says it plays one to three hours depending on your scenario. Now this is something I would probably never use on my own. Obviously I, it's kind of hard to play a card game against yourself. But I also think this would be a good game to take with you if you're riding on the train, if you're going to a convention, uh, and you can just take it out the box, obviously, and uh, take the cards with you. So I am going to open this because it's only $8, so I'm not sitting here worried about it losing its value. This is by Decision Game, which is another reason I got it, because Decision Games has a good reputation. So you can see here, there's some errata, which I guess that's that's not to be too bad. Now this is funny because this is old tape, I mean old rubber band. So unless they rubber band their sets, oh okay, they maybe I was about to say somebody resealed this, but it looks like they included some rubber bands, which was probably a good idea at the time, but not so much. So anyway, you got this rule book, which is, again, this is kind of lengthy. What is this? 25 pages. Uh, so this looks like a big history section in the back. So let's just count that out. 
out of the rue. So you've got, I don't know how many pages it is. So it's almost like a turn example. You have scenarios, which is kind of odd how you do scenarios with a card game. Actually, they only have two scenarios, which is kind of funny. And then I guess these are the rules. Or is this another example? No, this is another appendix of play. So the rules actually only go to basically page eight and a half are your rules. So I don't know. It doesn't look like it's too involved, but let's see the cards here. Let's show you one side of them. So you get there, and it's a lot of cards. So you could probably play the whole war. It looks like these are gray, so I'm assuming these are the Confederates cards. And I don't know what these are. And then some replacement cards, which how would they know what cards needed to be replaced? I don't know, but maybe that's from the errata. So we are going to move that aside and bring in the next game. Now this game was actually purely purchased to resell I had this and the game that goes with it called Third World War. Uh, I think it was called Battle for Germany or something like that. I just sold that recently. So I don't have that anymore. This is the Southern Front, which I guess is an expansion. Uh, it's GDW. It says it is ad advanced level. Uh, 360 counters. Uh, four to six hours, two players, time scale, one week per turn. So, this is about a $40 game. I mean, they were sold together, so I, I basically bought them both. This doesn't look like it's been played at all. You got the briefing book, the rule book, the unit identifications, the map. The map looks nice. Uh, although there is like a big... There's like a big uh, crease in these maps. Which I mean after all these years. I don't know how old this is. I guess you have to expect that. But yeah there's a crease running through there. Pretty pretty noticeable. The counters are unpunched. At least this one is. So these are not. These have been punched. But I think I lined them back up. Just to make sure they were all there. Now typically I tend not to like to play games with. Are what are called unit designation counters so that's where they have the squares and the X's and the O's I used to know all these all these designations but you know I used to know a lot of military stuff because I was in the army for a while now I prefer if they have just an infantry figure or a tank or a armored vehicle or something on there it just makes it simpler. But I understand at this scale, you're not really going to be representing one tank or one infantry. So you're going to be representing a company or a platoon or whatever. So, But yeah, this one is probably going to get resold. I don't really, I don't really plan on playing this. It's not solo. <clears throat> now, this one was a good pickup. I don't remember this game in particular ever owning it. But I owned a lot of games, or at least I, I played or tried to find a lot of games by Task Force Games. Who basically did uh, the Star Trek, uh, I think was it called Starfleet Command or something like that. So Federation and Empire is kind of like a, a galaxy-wide battle. So, I mean, you get some excellent looking counters here. With your different ships and uh, races and planets and things. Uh, so you got a lot of counters here. So that's impressive. You got this map, which is totally rad. Look at all these space maps. And I'm assuming the yellow, I don't know, I imagine those are suns or what does the legend say here? Star bases, battle stations, major planets, minor planets. And then you get the rules. Which I think talk about the game that this came out of. 
Starfleet Battles. That's what I'm thinking of. It says the background of this game is identical to that for our Starfleet Battles. So this game portrays the titanic struggle between three star-faring superpowers. One by one, the Kleon Federation and Romulans were drawn into the general war. So, yeah, this looks interesting. So, I would definitely like to play this. I mean, obviously, I think it would be better if you were playing it with somebody. Uh, it says here that it has 1,080 die-cut playing pieces, eight player charts, Fast play scenarios, large rule and scenario booklet, number of players 2 to 8, age 12 years or older, time from 4 hours. From 4 hours. So they don't they don't want to say time about a week. <laughs> Just said from 4 hours. Somewhere from 4 hours. Alright, next up. Next up is Dawn's Early Light, which I have no Familiarity with Peter Bogdasarian's Corpse Command. Summer of 85 and Soviet tank stream into West Germany. Uh, I like the counters, as you can see. They're, they're pictured in detail. Uh, it says it has solitaire playability is high. So I used to love these war games when they would always put that. I think... Avalon Hill, or was it SPI, pioneered that on the back of their games. They would always have a, uh, or maybe it was Victory Games. They would always have this solitaire suitability chart, which was so cool. So, like, this one is 100 solitaire. This is a solitaire game, obviously, very high. But anyway, I'm trying to remember where I saw this, or was it part of another lot that I bought? Because some of these I just bought in lots. But others I bought off the shelf. This one I think I bought off the shelf. I think it was like ten dollars. Uh, and the reason I bought it was because it did say it had high solitaire suitability. So the rule book is, I don't know, about eleven pages, and you're getting into victory conditions. So that should be quite easy. And I don't see like a scenario. I mean a solo section so I'm wondering how do they handle the solo rules or do they just tell you just play it solo but some of the games when I was growing up that was that's what solo meant was oh you can play both sides so that would be that would mean that it had some solo suitability but so we have different uh different bags here representing a lot of the different countries and stuff I'm assuming a lot of the different aircrafts and things. There's some charts. Let's see the map. So this is a pretty nice looking map. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, almost looks like an aerial map. Eisenbach, Nasbrook, Miltelbaum, Schneiderberger, Jungweiler, Tannhausen, Falkenborn. So... Yeah, none of them ring a bell to me, so I was in, I was in Germany uh, when I was in the army, but I must not have been in that part of Germany. Okay, so we are going to move on. Peloponnesian War. Now, this one I bought off of Board Game Geek. I had heard about this, uh... From like people that were mentioning victory games and uh, chats were saying, hey, you got, there's Ambush, there's Patton's Best, there's, uh, what's the air game? I forget the name of it. Uh, was it Flight Leader and P Peloponnesian War? So I decided like Peloponnesian War, I've never had that. So I decided to track it down. I went to Bork and Geek Marketplace, and I think it was like $15 plus shipping. And uh, it's a solo game, I think. It says, players, it's a complete solitaire system for one, 
for one two player version, three to seven player version. So I guess there's a version for different different those different players, one or two players or three or seven players, which that's a huge spread. Uh, the Peloponnesian War lets you chart the destiny of the war. This strategic game of ancient warfare, all existing solitaire systems on the market, have the player take one side for the entire game. So in this game, you switch sides. One side, you're the Greeks, and then I think the other ones you would switch over to... Who are they fighting in the Peloponnesian War? Uh, uh, Pericles, Gasabides. Uh, I guess they're fighting each other. <laughs> so let's see here. This one is in nice shape. Oh, I really appreciate it that the guy that sold it to me was quite accurate in the description. The counters are punched and in a little counter tray you have a map. Okay, Thessaly, Macedon, Macedon, Achaia, Arcadia, the Aegean Sea, Lydia, Phrygia. Wow. Wow. So all of this is, this, this looks real nice. And I will say, going through this, one of the things I do try to do is I do try to get unpunched games whenever I can, which I'm sure most people do. But, uh, you know, I'm usually willing to pay a little more if it's unpunched. I mean, even though I guess I'm going to wind up punching them. But uh, it's just something nice having it unpunched until you're ready. So, I love also looking through these little flyers in here. They're little brochures. So, you have Lee versus Grant, Gettysburg, and Civil War. So, these are things I will look for. I will pull these out, and I will see if I can find some of these games. Now, some of them I realize or I, I learned aren't, weren't that good. So, I really don't get them unless I can get a collector's copy. Like, Third Reich, I mean, you can find a bunch of garbage copies, but, you know... It's not really a game that a lot of people recommend. So, you know, unless you just want one, you can might as well wait or just not get it. I don't know about Stalingrad. I don't know about Pacific War. This is the squad leader, Panzer Blitz, Panzer Leader. I just got a copy of Panzer Leader, which I think I have out. Panzer Blitz, I think you can get that relatively easy. Squad Leader, not so much. You have MBT Mobile Battle Tank, which I don't have. I think I've been trying to get that. Tac Air, I don't have that. Flight Leader is the one I mentioned. Uh, Fifth Fleet, I don't have that. Napoleon Battles. Glamorous use of miniatures in board game format. That's interesting. $26. <laughs> Did it actually have miniatures in it? Hmm. I don't know. A set of ground. Oh, these are tactical miniature rules. And then, of course, you got Tactics 2 and War at Sea. Tactics 2 is another one people don't really don't really get. I mean, you can find them for 8 or 9 bucks. And War at Sea, I don't know about. This was $13 back then, and this was only $15. Can you believe that? I probably could buy every game listed on here for about 100 bucks. 17, 25, 21, 13, 15. All I had to do was get him 100 bucks. Another 100, you can run the table. That's how affordable these games were back in the day. Oops. We don't want to lose any of these. So that is Peloponnesian War, which I hope to, uh, I hope to get set up. Although you have to be willing to read some rules to get through some of this stuff. Now, this one is a classic. Eh. Eh. Ah. Patton's Best. 
I remember I had this game and I tried to play it once and woo. I kind of gave up in a little bit of frustration. But I'm willing. I'm older. I'm wiser. I'm more mature now. And I also live by myself. So all of those together, there should be no reason I can't learn to play this. Especially since I've played Ambush. So I don't know what this is. This might be some kind of extra. So I always like getting this stuff. I mean, sometimes some of it is better than other, but I always like when people have put articles in here or their notes. That's always pretty cool to, to get. So you got Patton's Best. Wow, this person had the whole sheet filled out with the crew and everything in the tanks. And the different tanks you could get if you survive. We got the counters, which again, I told you I like those with the little vehicle images on there. We got more counters and dice. We have a product catalog, 1986, July 1st, two weeks before I went into the army. Uh, that was the year I went into the army, it was 86, the same year I graduated high school. And I went in on July 14th because it was two weeks before my birthday which is July 31st wow look at a lot of these games I never heard of some of these Lords of Creation now these are role playing games James Bond James Bond Assault James Bond Back of Beyond obviously James Bond was huge back then James Bond role playing, A View to a Kill, Goldfinger 2, A GN Strike, Battle Him. That is a game I have that I want to break out. The Korean War, I've never played that. Dark Emperor, Advanced Squad Leader, Paratrooper, which is a module for Advanced Squad Leader. Empires in Arms, Knights of the Air, Railroads and Robber Barons, Flight Leader. Uh, wow, this thing is actually pretty interesting. It says, we spend more on product development than we make in profit. Ah, that's probably why you're not in business no more. <laughs> oh my goodness. France, 1944. Second Fleet. These are order pages. Uh, that's weird stuff. Incredible edibles. A jigsaw puzzle. Wait, what is that? The General, the magazine. Heroes. I never heard of this. Heroes, the Avalon Hill Game Company's role playing game magazine. I have never heard of that. So we get through that. We have to. Another general advert. These are your maps. Or your map board. Which I've always loved these mounted map boards. Oops. So I've always liked these. You don't have to worry about them crinkling and wrinkling and creasing and anything else. You just play on your board. And this was like a computer. You know, it had so many different things, so much so much different stuff going on. You know, it was like playing on a computer. The only thing is, sometimes you couldn't remember how to fold these. Which I can't remember. Oh my goodness. Alright, that's gonna have to do for now. This is your tank after action report, your tank schematics. This is your sheet for your crew. There. Your after action report. And then your different tanks. It wasn't just Sherman's either. You had an M4. M4A1. I don't know if I should be taking these off. But let's go to the back. So the Jumbo... They have an easy eight. Firefly. 
Easy 8 Firefly right there. Another Easy 8. And a Jumbo. So you could upgrade your tank as, as the game progressed. So I am definitely... I am definitely looking forward to playing this one. This is one I... I want to get started with sooner rather than later. Uh, just because I, I like Ambush. And this is pretty much Ambush in the tank. Okay, everybody. So I'm gonna wrap it up here, and then we're gonna do a part two because I don't want I don't want this video to go too long. But so far we've gotten through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different war games in my uh, collection, uh, and we got a little bit of everything right now, mostly. Although, I guess I'd say most of this is modern. We have a, an Ancients with Peloponnesian War. And then we have an ACW with the Battlecry card game. So, but, uh, then we have Modern and World War II and Space. Yeah, so I guess it is a mix of everything. So, the next video, we're going to look at the next, I'd say, six or seven games we have Ramo in North Africa. We have Panzer Leader, Star Force, Civil War. Uh, I believe I have Blitzkrieg, Battles and Leaders, and is that called Fifth Frontier War? And then we will probably, after that, in the last uh, video, because I'm probably going to wind up doing three of these, take a look at Dawn Patrol, RAF. Sergeants D-Day and Luftwaffe. All right, take care, guys. God bless. Mm -hmm.